Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Today we take some ponderosa pine, and this, this ponderosa pine, it turns blue when it ages, so it's kind of cool looking. And my brother-in-law sent me this wood from Montana, and he wants me to make him a rustic flag with live edges on it. And yeah, let's get started. The first thing I do is cut this down to size, and it needed to be, my, the flag that I'm putting in here is about 16 by 30, and so there's the two pieces. I then run it through my grizzly joiner, making sure that these joints are nice and flat. And I got a time clock up here in the window just to see how long this thing's going to take me. Right here, I, I've got a DeWalt biscuit joiner, and I throw four biscuits in it just to kind of help keep it nice and straight. I've had that biscuit joiner for 25 years probably. And here are the, some little biscuits, and I'm trying out this new glue roller, and I'll leave a description of it. It actually worked pretty good for this. If you're just doing like, you know, one joint like I am right here, it kind of works pretty good. So I thought that actually was a, not a bad addition to the glue. So right here I got three steel uh, one by twos and that I clamp those down always first to keep it nice and flat. I then get out my bar clamps and um, actually I got to get some small some more smaller clamps I had two of these plastic clamps break recently right there I'm using my pipe clamps and I put about five of these on here once I get them all tightened up I wait till the next day let her dry and then I pull her apart now this part right here is critical I got to get the flag dimensions figured out because it's going to go in between here and I'm going to leave these live edges. Okay, next up after getting good dimensions, we go ahead and put in our width, which in this case is 33 inches. And our height is 17.5. 17, 17 and our thickness is 1.2315. And we're going to, because this is going to be a surfacing program, we're going to go standard and we'll hit OK. Now we need to create a rectangle. So we go up here to rectangles and we're going to put in our dimensions. So our width is 33 and our height 17.5 and hit create. And then we're going to close that, highlight our rectangle, and center. We're, now what we need to do here is, because we're, we're going to run a surfacing program, we want to make sure the, the surfacing bit comes past here. So I've got it glued down on um, double-sided tape, and I put some wood blocks. So I'm going to offset this thing an inch to make sure that I go all the way across it. And we'll go ahead and offset that. Oops, we need to go to the outside, offset, close, and we'll delete these two inner ones. So there's our tool path right there. Let's go over to the tools. We're gonna do it, we're gonna highlight that. We're gonna do a pocketing tool path. And it's already got the spoil board cutter in there, 6210. I like that one, it does a nice job. We're gonna start out with an eighth an inch. And we'll go ahead and put the tool number down here. 6210 and calculate. We'll go ahead and preview it. And you can see it just goes back and forth. Now that that's fine for me, that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and I'll see you over at the machine. Once over at the machine, I clean off the table really good and I put down this um, double-sided tape. I measure it, make sure the distance of the tape. I'm using these stainless steel pins to square up the material on the table. This is a 3M double-sided tape. It actually works pretty good. 
I end up I ended up putting some wood blocks on this project also just for security. I did not want it to move. Whenever you do a 3D flag, it, they do take a long time, so you really you make one mistake and a lot of time is wasted. Anyway, I put four rows of this tape down. Now this flag is going to be rustic. We're not going to stain it. And we're not going to do anything to it. We're just going to let the natural blue wood kind of... Uh, I do want to seal it, so I have to talk to the talk to my brother-in-law and see if he's okay with me sealing the wood. It's kind of fun when you get a request for a special project. Like this one is an army flag, and I haven't done an army flag yet, so it's kind of cool. And looking at the 3D model, um, the army logo is really cool. It has a lot of detail in it. It's got the eagle holding some arrows and some other stuff, and it's pretty cool. Right here, I peel off all the tape, get it ready to stick down to the, get ready to stick my project down. And here's my project. I thought the live edge idea was pretty cool, actually. Um, yeah, it seemed like that was kind of going to be an interesting way to go. The only problem with live edges is they're not straight, so you really, you have a little bit of trouble with that, getting accurate measurements when the flag gets put down on there. I screwed down a few wood blocks just for extra security. Once I get it all screwed down, it was time to time to surface this. Right now I'm installing the 6210 three bladed surfacing bit by Whiteside. I'll show you a picture right here. I put that little light in the corner because I couldn't hardly see my computer. My eyesight's not as good as it was. I need to put more lights in this room actually. I go ahead and do the homing sequence. Because this material is pretty thin, I'm only going to surface one side of it. I can't afford to lose too much material. Um, normally I, st I start out with an inch and a half of material, but this, this particular material is a little bit thin. I go through my checklist, homing the machine, then I do the XYZ. Right here I'm using my touch plate. I do have a bigger surfacing bit than this, but it's too, I have too hard a time getting it to go into the center of that um, touch plate. It's just too big. Get my dust shoe ready. We're definitely running dust collection on this one. And then I run the program. We're basically going to take an eighth inch off, and I think that's going to be enough. Right here, this is 20 times speed. So right now in our project so far, we're about 50 minutes in. That's eh, not too bad. Once the surfacing program is done, then I know that the 3D model will project onto the wood perfectly with the computer. The next thing I do is I put on a 1502 white side V-carve bit, half inch. Num yeah, number 1502. I'll show you a picture right here. And I XYZ it. I don't have to home it or do anything else because it's already homed. Do the Z, the Y, and right here I'm going to leave the dust shoe off because it V carb doesn't shoot out that much dust. And right here I'm cutting the stars. Right here I'll show you a little better close up using my phone. As I'm editing this video right now, there's a little buck outside my window. Not as big as the last one, but here's a. And some blue jays. See him right there. And some blue jays. Right here, I finish up the V carb and I proceed to load an RD2075 from Whiteside. This is a quarter inch down cut spiral bit. And I'll put a picture right here. Now here's where I made a mistake and I didn't realize it, but this quarter inch bit that I'm putting in, I thought I had tightened it down really tight, but apparently it wasn't quite tight enough. So now I'm in the future, I, I really tighten it down because what happened was this bit started started coming loose and dropping down as it was spinning and it dug deeper than I wanted it to. So I ended up having to write 
a bunch of programs to uh, basically fix my mistake. But you can always, you can always, if you do have a mistake, you can always um, write a new, another program and machine write over it. So that's kind of what I had to do here. I I don't think I've had that happen before because I, I usually tighten these really tight, but for some reason it came loose. And that's on the check, checklist up there, the Avid CNC checklist. Always check, you know, check, make sure your router bits on there and make sure your G code is, is uploaded correctly. And uh, make sure you warm up your spindle. A lot of little things to think about, but all in all, it's pretty easy. The only thing I don't like about down cut bits is it le it, it kind of leaves the material in the slot. And when you have an up cut bit, it kind of throws it up into the dust collection. But I think the down cut bits do do a little cleaner job. They don't have any um, tear out. So that's kind of why I decided to use this, especially with the 3D image. I don't want to have any big pieces tear out and then and then it doesn't end up looking good. Right there I knew something was wrong because it cut real deep and then it wasn't cutting at all. So what happened was the bit came loose and it cut deep and when it went deep it pushed the bit back up and right there I hit the emergency stop. And I'm like what the hell is going on? At first I thought man my computer's not doing what I'm telling it to do but it was it was the bit. So after uh, redoing everything and making sure this bit was super tight. I then had to do a homing procedure again. I then did the XYZ again and then had to run the program again. And basically what I did was I figured out, so the deepest part that it went, I wrote a new program to cut it to that depth. So when you see the finished flag and you see how thick my flags, uh, my little flags are, or the stripes, that's the reason why. But it does look cool. I'm, it just, when you cut that deep, it just takes a lot longer to do it. Actually, the first flag I ever did, I, I did a deep cut, and then I thought, why am I cutting it so deep? That takes a lot longer, and I started cutting them a little shallower. But in this case, in order to fix this, and I only had this one, these two pieces of wood, because he sent it to me from Montana, I pretty much had to make sure that I figured a way to make this turn to do this. So, but from here on out, everything went pretty good. Um, yeah, I recut all these stripes and then right away started on the 3D, uh, the roughing toolpath of the 3D model. Here's a different view using my GoPro. I still like the GoPro be the best because it has such a good picture and a really wide angle. Right here the stripes are almost done. I think it's doing the last couple passes. Next up I cut this round circle and that was hard to do with the with the live edge because I ended up being off by by a little bit and Right here, I have the same bit in there, the RD2075, and I'm doing the roughing, the 3D roughing toolpath. And what it'll do is it'll take out as much material as it can, and it, I think it leaves 0 0.04 of material for the 3D finishing toolpath. Every time I do one of these 3D uh, models, even though it takes a long time, like this particular one took, I think, three and a half hours, about three hours of that 3D time. But the detail, I just can't believe that, the, you know, this particular bit that I have is a, um, well, right now we're running the, the roughing toolpath. But the finishing bit that I use is an Amana tapered ball nose. And I, I just... It's so amazing the detail that I can get out of it. Um, yeah, it works really well. Do a little cleanup. Once the roughing toolpaths was done, it was time to install the Amana bit. And I made sure to make sure this bit was really tight on there. 
I clean out the collet and install this man a bit. I tighten the crap out of that. I then do the XYZ and I then run the program. And this is at 3000 times speed. I'm about halfway right there and we're two hours and 50 minutes in. If you look close though, you can see the detail in the flat in the 3D model. Really looks good. And here it's finishing up. Probably has another, I don't know, probably another half hour just to do that top part. But I have this speeded up at 3,000 times. Look at the look at the detail in the in the eagle. It really looks good. And there it is done. Next up, I take these. I take my Dremel with these little foam sandpaper things that, and take off all the burrs. Just kind of go around and clean it up really good. They they wear out. They're real cheap to buy, but they, but they're right here's the ones that I like. And they're like these little sanding balls that you can kind of get in those little cracks and clean off any any little fuzzies. They do wear out quick though. I use two of them on this flag. But they do. They are, I have been happy with how they work. I'll leave a description of them here. Thanks for watching this episode of Outlaw Woodworking. This turned out really cool. So, this request came from my brother in law in Montana, and he sent this blue wood, or, or it's not called blue wood, it's ponderosa pine, but it kind of turns this bluish color. And he sent these two pieces of wood to me and requested this United States Army flag. I guess he was in the Army. And anyway, it turned out pretty cool. It's got live edges on both top and the bottom, and it has a pretty cool look to it. I did, I did have trouble with it, but um, I, broke a, I broke one of the bits. Or actually, one of the bits came loose uh, when it was doing these these flag uh, pockets. But all in all, it came out really nice. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video, and I will see you next time. Later.